I've learned a lot about engineering in my 17 years of experience in the field. However, these are the things that I wish I had known much early in my career. And one tip at the end that I'd recommend you stick around to, because the one thing that I regret the deepest. Hope you enjoy it. My name is Brendan. Now let's get into it. Before starting out in engineering, most people have a thought in the mind about what they think engineering is about. And that's what's drawn you to the field where you're solving unique problems, building things and testing them in the field. You're iterating and changing your advice. And this has really come from movies. To some aspect, some of it's true, maybe not building, but you do need to solve unique problems. But what you do in day in, day out from an engineer is far from this. As engineers, yes, we need to be good at maths. We need to be good at problem solving, thinking outside the box to try and solve the problems that are addressed to you. Most projects you work on, you'll be working with many other consultants, whether it be the architect, the electrical, the mechanical engineer. And you need to make sure that you're addressing all of their problems to bring the building together. So a lot of your time will be spent in coordination, checking that things actually work, checking that you've coordinated with the electrical engineer, the hydraulic engineer, the mechanical engineer, and the architect. You need to work through all these constraints and still make sure that you have an adequate structure. As no building is just functional if it just has architecture, if it just has structural engineering, if it just has mechanical, electrical, all of them need to come together to have a functional building. So sometimes you need to come up with a solution that may not be the best structural option, but is the best for project. And other times you may need to push back as if you can't get something to work, there's no point in agreeing with everyone and saying that it can. See, most of your time may be spent in those meetings, having some of those soft skills through many discussions and guiding people through the problems that you're having, sketching up different details to make sure you're addressing the issues and coming up with a structurally efficient solution. So your most important skill set here is your communication skills. Yes, you need to be good at engineering. You need to be able to think on your feet, problem solve, and come up with the right solutions. But you need to be able to effectively communicate to the greater team that have a wide variety of skills. So whether that be written, verbal, or drawings. Communicating back and forth is really where you'll be spending most of your time and where you can have the biggest impact on a project. When I first started out my career, I've just graduated from university. Surely I know everything that I need to know to be a great engineer. Was I sorely mistaken? It's about getting your hands dirty and starting the grunt work. Anyone above you or anyone that's assigning you the tasks is likely to be able to do it quicker than you can. Now that's not to say a bad thing as you need to learn. But you really need to get your hands dirty, do some of those boring and most mundane tasks to be able to improve your engineering skills and learning how to design. Learning how to design as an engineer takes time not something that can be taught through university, but something that needs to be taught through doing and through running into problems in the field. So you need to make sure you're doing some of that grunt work as it will give you a better understanding of structural mechanics and how buildings actually work. You can also learn a lot from the engineers above you about how they put a design together. So don't shy away from designing those columns, doing those load rundowns, designing portions or whole slabs all beneficial, or even looking at things like steel connections. Steel connections can be amazingly tedious, but it can also be an amazing idea about how structures actually behave and how you can connect and build buildings. This is some of the grunt work that I would say that you should try and rival in to make sure that you're becoming a better engineer. Everyone's wanting to quickly jump into those fancy structural FE softwares. But you need some way of judging whether the answers you're getting out of the software are correct or not. Because if you put garbage into the software, you get garbage results out and they won't really mean anything despite them giving you an answer. Learning how to design as an engineer and learning those structural mechanics takes time from those repetitive tasks. It's much like progressing your career as a black belt in karate. It takes many years to become good at your craft. And there's really no shortcut to this. Yes, you can do a lot of learning outside of hours, but it really takes many years and many design examples of iterations so you can fully understand the beauty behind structural engineering and the craft that it is. There's always a constant pressure from either the clients or the senior management for you to go quicker and quicker and quicker. And you can get lost and procrastinate about how slow you're actually approaching your designs. You can see the directors finishing stuff off so much quicker than you have. No one's expecting you to finish as fast as they have. And sometimes being slower can lead to a better result as you may miss something critical. So when you're looking at the designs, not trying to speed it up or just trying to go faster and faster and faster, but look at how other people approach their designs. How are they able to achieve their designs faster? And maybe you can approach some of their methods to help you speed up your design methodology. But sometimes it's just experience. An engineer may look at the results and just know it intuitively. That's something that you'll learn over time and no one's expecting you to know this when you're first starting out your career. So don't get hung up on how slowly you're doing something. 
but always looking to improve and improve your efficiency over time. When you get a design that is too big, it can be completely overwhelming. You don't know where to start. Break it down into the simple tasks. Step one, step two, step three, step four. And as you find you start to progress through those tasks one on one on one, you slowly be able to do this ginormous task and it wasn't so hard. It wasn't so daunting as you thought it would be. And you'll find you'll finish it a lot sooner than you thought you would. Always ask questions and making sure that you're taking criticism as a benefit, not a negative, as it will help you progress your career. But when you're going to ask those questions, making sure that you're coming to them with a solution, not just asking them to solve your problems. Now, it doesn't matter whether that solution is right or wrong, really irrelevant. You've had a go. This is how you improve over time. And as you do this and start submitting those answers, you'll find more and more and more, you'll have the correct answers. It'll help build your confidence. Where if you're just going to someone for the solutions, they may be able to give it to you straight away. However, you do become reliant on them to solve your problems instead of you solving your problems yourself. And when you do have a solution and a question, making sure that you do have a discussion with them about why you've approached things a certain way. Just because they approach it one way doesn't mean your way was wrong either. And maybe they may not have known something that you know, and that's why you approached it in a certain way. So stick up for it. And at times you may get some criticism about how you've approached it or why you've done things certain ways. This criticism, despite being harsh and you're feeling, oh my God, they just criticized me for doing things a certain way, but treat it as a way to improve your engineering skills. So they've taken time to say, I've seen something, you should be doing a different way. This is what you're doing wrong. As a professional, we should be looking at that. Thank you for that advice. I will make sure that I'm trying to approach it from that way in my next designs. Criticism, despite being quite debilitating, maybe when you first got it, should be taking it as a positive and a way that you can improve your career. You need to take control of your career and track your progress, knowing what projects you've worked on, what type of designs you've done, what you're getting good at and what you need more improvement on. It's not up to your manager to track those things. They're constantly trying to look at, am I hitting budgets? Am I getting new work? Am I making sure everyone's assigned with tasks? They've got all these things running through their heads. They're not thinking about, has John done this thing correctly? He needs more experience here. He needs no more experience on that. Yes, they may be able to see that you need to get more experience in different aspects, but they're not keeping track of it. That's really up to you. And besides, your manager doesn't know where you want your career to go, as there's many different fields that you can focus on, whether it be management, design skills, technical skills, project management skills. Where do you see your career in the future and what do you really enjoy? They don't know that. That's really up to you. So you should be keeping track of all those things, knowing where you want your career to go. Doesn't mean it will change over time, as it can swerve as you find things more enjoyable. And when you're tracking these things, making sure you're writing them down and tracking about how you've made this improvement here, you've made this change that led to a great result on this project. You've led to more design efficiencies through approaching this type of application in a certain way or building the tools on top of it that everyone's using. And by doing that, it allows your manager to see that you're serious about your career and be easier for you to get that next pay rise. But when you're talking about that career development, pushing that pay down to the back as it really muddies waters and makes you only think about the pay, which everyone wants. Yes, to some extent, they are intertwined as without career development, you can't get better, leading to those pay rises. But you want to make sure that you're having career development as a separate discussion to make sure you're improving your career down the direction you want to go instead of just chasing for that greater paycheck. As the grass is not always green at that other company, you'll find a lot of the time when you're changing between companies, they're very similar in scope and the problems that they're having, as it's normally an industry problem. And your career is more important about the colleagues you're working with than the company you're working for. Yes, sometimes there is toxic cultures out there, so you need to know the difference between a good company and a bad company. But when you get into a good company, making sure you're not jumping ship too early, as it's really hard to progress your career if you're just jumping ship to ship to ship. Eventually, you'll run onto a bad ship and it'll be hard to move into your next role. That's not to say that you shouldn't change companies if you've run into a good one. As sometimes you don't know where there is a good one, where there's something better out there. Even if it's the best company you've worked for, sometimes different opportunities will allow you to see engineering from a different point of view, giving you more of a unique skill set that may be more valuable in the future and may lead to life-changing results. As engineers, we need to be constant learners. It's something that always everyone brings up. It's about learning, learning, learning. It's really a lifelong endeavor. There's so much that you need to know. Engineering is such a broad subject. But too often I hear from other people and something I did early in my career as well, thinking that 
I don't get paid enough. I want to have fun outside of work hours. I don't need to learn outside of work. Work should provide me with as much stuff that I need to learn about to make sure that I'm better at my job. This is really where you'll be held back in your career. Yes, you may be able to learn enough just to de-risk the project, but as a company, they're not going to spend too much money or time on you as you can jump firms. And there's also always going to be someone that is out there learning, striving to be better, trying to learn those new concepts and be better at their job. What you got to realize that engineering is a craft and not something you just rock up at nine, finish at five and think about something else. There's quite a lot to learn as it is an art. What you got to realize is that learning is all about you and not the company. To some extent, they want to de-risk it, but becoming a better engineer and being better at your job is all about yourself as you need to make sure that you have the skill sets to make sure that you can sleep at night, making sure that you're getting better at your designs. So if you do need to go for that next role in the same company or a new position, you have the skills and the chops to prove it. Much like the engineering life and being that constant learner, this brings me nicely into the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning, much like engineers, who wants to learn to expand their creativity and learn new skills and invest in yourself and your own personal growth. Skillshare provides an ad-free experience allowing you to explore those new skills with new premium classes launched weekly. So there's always something new to learn and discover. Some classes that I think you may enjoy are classes about either improving your communication skills, your leadership skills, or also that much needed Python programming. There's some different skills for everyone, doesn't matter what part of their career they're in. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description box or my code, Brendan Hasty, will get a one month free trial on Skillshare. The one thing that I regret the most is not investing my money earlier, as you can only earn so much working for a paycheck. However, you can get your money to work for yourself. So anyone that's interested and wants to make sure they're opening their horizons into the future, look into things such as compound interest, looking at things to invest in, doing your research, making sure you're studying up on these things and making sure you're investing your money the right way. As if you do it for long enough, you can make sure that you've got enough money so it doesn't matter whether you're getting paid in day in, day out. So you can just do things because you love it. Getting rich cannot happen overnight unless you win the lottery. Really, how many people do that? But if you slowly save up your money, making sure you're getting that bigger nest egg and investing it in the right way, you'll get rich over time. And sometimes the earlier you start, the less you'll need to put in the end. If you're looking to progress your career faster, you should go no further than my 10 essential skills that every engineer should have. If you're wondering about how much people get paid, there's also a video linked here for you. And if you're interested in supporting the channel further, I've got links to my Patreon in the below description. And I'd just like to give a quick shout out to one of my newest patrons, Kevin Jing. Without your support and the support of my other patrons, this type of content would not be possible. And as always, stay safe, keep learning, and I'll see you next week. Bye.